Kurt Nimmo writes, Richard Clark, Hastings accident consistent with a car cyber attack. Former U.S. National Coordinator for Security Infrastructure Protection and Counterterrorism, Richard Clark, told the Huffington Post on Monday that the fatal crash of a journalist Michael Hastings' Mercedes Coupe is, quote, consistent with a car cyber attack. And as an addendum to this, just about an hour before we started recording this nightly news, one of Hastings' former friends, uh, a, sp a former sergeant, in fact, went on Fox News and gave an interview. And we're going to have an article up on Infowars.com about this very shortly. He basically said that Hastings told him directly he was working on, quote, the biggest story ever involving the CIA. And then he completely rubbished claims that Hastings would be driving at high speed in the middle of the night. In fact, I believe his exact quote was, he drove like a grandma. So it was completely out of character for Hastings to be driving, you know, 100 miles down the street in the middle of the night. And of course, we know from his panicked emails he sent to his friends hours before his death that he thought he was be being pursued by the authorities. So we're going to have an article out on that. But Clark, who is no tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist, he's no internet blogger. You know, he was the former counter-terror czar under two separate U.S. presidents. He's now saying that evidence suggests it could have been a cyber hack on the onboard computer of the Mercedes, took control of the vehicle, and uh, ended up smashing it into a tree. Of course, the car basically exploded. And in this article, we point to research out of DARPA uh, and other universities Quote, currently there's nothing to stop anyone with malicious intent and some computer programming skills from taking command of your vehicle. After gaining access, a hacker could control everything from which song plays on the radio to whether the brakes work, writes Keith Barry, citing research conducted by the Center for Automotive Embedded System Security, a partnership between the University of California, San Diego, and the University of Washington. Now, Clark was careful not to directly implicate the government in hacking Hastings' car. He said, quote, so if there were a cyber attack, on, cyber attack on the car, and I'm not saying there was, I think whoever did it would probably get away with it. In the case of Michael Hastings, what evidence is available publicly is consistent with a car cyber attack. That's Richard Clark, former counterterrorism czar under two U.S. presidents. And, of course, we also know from... The revelations of former MI6 agent Richard Tomlinson, the MI6, the British intelligence agency, discussed using similar methods to crash the car of Slobodan Milosevic back in the 1990s. And of course, the fatal car crash involving Princess Diana in 1997 bore numerous indications that her Mercedes was tampered with, an explanation which, of course, was shielded by the cover story that the driver, Henri Paul, was drunk when in, flat, when in fact blood samples were switched and Paul showed no signs of being over the limit. So it's a tactic that they've used before or at least considered using before in previous assassination attempts. Now Richard Clark saying it. We have the panicked emails from Hastings sent hours before his death claiming he was being pursued by the authorities. Now we have another one of his friends coming out on Fox News saying he was working on the biggest story ever about the CIA and he basically believes that he could have been assassinated. So this story only continues to become more suspicious in the death of former Rolling Stone journalist Michael Hastings, who of course made many enemies in the establishment. Biometrics news now. Coming to America, Shanghai now requires ID finger scan. Shanghai residents will be required to have their fingerprints scanned while obtaining a new ID card starting from July 1st. The move is aimed to curb counterfeiting and the false use of ID cards. Basically, in Shanghai, the people who need to renew their ID card are now having to go to the local police office and give their fingerprints, like a criminal would, to be kept on a database stored forever. And, you know, if it's good enough for communist China, it must be good enough for America. Over the last month, of course, we've seen numerous stories about schools taking child's digital fingerprints without parental permission. And the Polk County School District in Florida, this may be big headlines recently, 
made hundreds of children give iris scans before they could use the school bus. Parents were not told that they could opt out until 750 kids had been scanned, minority report style, simply to get on the school bus. So before we go to this classic clip from America Destroyed by Design here at the end of the show, just want to encourage you again to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Of course, the InfoWars Nightly News goes out first to prisonplanet.tv subscribers in high quality. It's later put on YouTube a day later or so. But your support is what allows us to do this. It funds the live show, the Alex Jones Show, which, of course, you get uh, live streaming video access to as well. In addition to every Alex Jones documentary, numerous other documentaries that we put out, speeches, special events, all kind of additional content, and it funds our network. It enables us to exist and continue to hire more people and grow as the biggest alternative media platform in America and indeed the world at Infowars.com. So, so please give us your support at PrisonPlanet.tv. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.